Hello class, my name is Daniel Lewis. I'm going to be presenting the final project for PE 580, Health and Wellness for Life, with Professor Sanchez. This is fall 2015, and uh, I am interested in researching and wanted to learn more about BMI for strength-trained athletes and understanding the impacts of obesity and overweight and, and seeing if that's going to be the best measure for athletes. Uh, I was an athlete myself, and I never fell under the healthy range, so I wanted to understand and learn more about that and see if that was the best measure. So understanding the body mass index, what is BMI? So BMI is a function of our weight and our height. So that's going to give us an output that's going to tell us uh, in, within a certain range. So BMI does not measure specifically body fat, but rather it's going to give us an output that's going to give us a healthy range or an overweight range or obese, so that's going to fall under certain categories. So that output is going to help us to know what we fall under from healthcare professionals. So the question becomes, is BMI the best indicator for athletes? So BMI, according to the CDC, they determine that anyone with a BMI over 25 is considered overweight, and anything over 30 would be considered obese. That would mean that an athlete at 6 feet 2 inches tall and weighing in at 200 pounds would have a BMI of 25.7 and that would be considered in the overweight range. So that would be a healthy size that you would be considered for an athlete if you were looking at someone on a football team. So the CDC does acknowledge that additional measurements or assessments would be needed uh, as far as understanding the overall health of an athlete. Uh, this question was posed to the CDC, and they acknowledged that that's not the best measure. So, METRE research has been done, and BMI looked at uh, the overall NFL, looking at their height and weight, and they found that 97% of NFL athletes are considered to be overweight, and 56% of those athletes are considered to be obese. So, using BMI as the uh, assessment, is going to show that some of our best and highly trained athletes are considered overweight and obese and unhealthy. Uh, I think just based on the eye test alone, we can tell that that's not going to be the case. Uh, also, the research study by Matthews and Wagner, they found that using BMI to as, as an assessment method showed 81% of collegiate football players were considered obese, overweight and 35% were considered obese. Now, the study did show that offensive linemen were the most at risk and they were found to be overweight and obese in all the fields of study. So they didn't look at just BMI. They also looked at waist circumference and body fat uh, composition. So those were more things that were studied in that field. The study did recommend to use body fat percentage as a part of the assessment rather than just BMI. So that leads us to figuring out what's going to be the best form of finding out an athlete's body composition. So BMI is not an accurate predictor of over fatness in young athletes and non-athletes. Due to the larger muscle mass among the male and female athletes, BMI is incorrectly classified. People who would normally, if you look at their body and look at the eye test or look at their overall body fat composition are not considered over fat, but they would just be normal fat athletes. So it is best to use body fat percentage as an indicator of their overall health and strength trained athletes rather than BMI. So uh, BM, so the body fat percentage is going to assess the level of adipose tissue throughout the body. So looking at all of this information, we see that uh, the body is very complex. And just looking at one indicator is not going to give a healthy or full picture idea on an athlete and knowing how their body really is. So what I want to do as a coach is to help them understand their body fat composition I want to help them understand waist circumference and muscle composition. These things are going to help equip the student and the athlete when they're done with playing sports and knowing what's going to be good for their long-term future, as well as understanding how healthy they're going to be currently and what their body is made up of now. So I want to help them understand and focus on maintaining healthy body fat percentages. This is going to include adequate exercise and strength building techniques. Uh, so that's going to be needed uh, to be a part of it. Also, athletes in the research showed that they have uh, extraordinary amounts of unhealthy diets. Uh, a disproportionate amount of their calories come from solid fats, alcohol, and sugar. So I want to be able to help train those athletes and help them understand that their diet is going to impact them and that what they're using 
to generate their power and energy is coming from the wrong sources. So I want to help them understand where to get the right energy from and the proper nutrition. So future research on the topic, what I'd be interested in learning more about is the relationship between body fat percentage and diet for athletes and for non-athletes. How does that affect so if an athlete and someone who's training very heavily, how is that actually going to affect them versus a non-athlete? What's going to be the difference? Also, body composition and analysis tools. Sometimes we don't have a water pod where we can pop a kid in and see what their muscle and fat and body composition is. So is there other ways that we can tell what they're at? Um, is there tools that we can have that, that aren't as high tech or as expensive, things of that nature? I uh, want to be able to help the kids understand those. Uh, Long-term effects of obesity and alignment. I coach offensive line, so I'm going to be dealing with these kids a lot. I want them to understand what it means and the impacts that it's going to have on their body. Um, also want to look if there's different standards of BMI. Is there potential that there could be a BMI for athletes and a BMI for non-strength trained athletes? Is, is there a different field or should we just look at different studies altogether? And what is the best measure for strength trained athletes? I want to research that in the future too, see what's going to be the most uh, useful. Uh, lastly, and just looking at final thoughts, athletes require strength training, especially in football and other sports of that nature, to be successful. So they're going to be more physical. They're going to have a different body composition than normal or sedentary person. So I want to help them understand that. Uh, so sport is going to impact their body composition. Football players need to be educated on the body composition, body fat, muscle density, water consumption, BMI, all the above. Those things are very important. And lastly, as an offensive line coach, I need to be able to train my players to understand the health impacts in the future and how to maintain a healthy body. Here's the research and where I looked at. I uh, found different articles. You can see the CDC and the like. Thanks.